and get a real good view here of the C-46 crash site. This is where we hiked to yesterday. Right back in there. On the lower slopes you'll see that little patch green with a uh, drainage coming through it. That's where the C-46 crashed. It took four days to hike from the crash site back to his village. This porter slipped off the trail and fell in the river, and he was washed about 100 foot downstream, weighed down by a 50 pound sack of rice tied onto his back. He was very fortunate to be able to grab that rock just in time before he went over a set of rapids. We got him out of the river and uh, he laid in the sun for a bit and was pretty shaken up, but after a while he felt well enough to continue on. While trekking through the jungle back to the village, Tapir was ahead of me about 20 foot when all of a sudden he stopped dead in his tracks, drew his machete, chopped a piece of bamboo and started flailing at the ground. That's when I noticed he was killing a Russell's Viper. The Russell's Viper is responsible for more human deaths in South Asia every year than cobras and crates combined. One afternoon we came across this camp deep in the jungle close to the Burma border. It appears to be a training camp for a guerrilla army, perhaps the Kachin Independence Army or KIA. This looks like a classroom and a lecture facility and then there were a number of smaller huts perhaps for sleeping in. We decided to camp out here that night and just hoped that none of the KIA soldiers came back and caught us there. Once we left the stream and got high up on the mountain there was no more flowing water. At our high camp near the crash site the only water source was a mud seep. We scooped out some holes which quickly filled full of water and then we boiled that water for about 10 minutes in order to make it safe to drink. At this plane crash I was fortunate enough to find an ID tag belonging to one of the crewmen. It belonged to Staff Sergeant Harry D. Tucker. Upon entering his name in a database I found out that this aircraft was B-25D serial number 41-30362 which crashed on the 10th of December 1943. This airplane was on a search and recovery mission in Burma when it was attacked by Japanese Zeros. The Zeros shot it up pretty bad and chased it across the border into India. Of the six crewmen aboard this aircraft, only one was able to get his parachute on in time to eject from the airplane, and that was the co-pilot, 2nd Lieutenant James F. Spain. He was able to eject from the airplane just moments before it crashed into the mountain. Five men died in this airplane wreck. When Lieutenant Spain finally returned to his home base in Chabua, India, he was debriefed by Army intelligence officers and he told them that the plane was badly damaged by the Japanese Zeros and was on fire. However, when I visited the wreckage site, I did not see any evidence of fire or explosion, just a lot of damaged metal. So I'm thinking that the fire he was talking about was just limited to the engines. A B-25 is usually armed with at least 10 50 caliber machine guns. And I think we found at least 10 50 calibers at this crash site. And there's a great shot of one of the wings. You can still see the Army Air Force star. From the crash site, you can see the border mountains separating India from Burma. And these mountains are between 12 and 14,000 foot. I'll be returning to this area next year to reach some additional crash sites that I've heard about high on these mountains. Rugged, remote, and uh, I know for a fact now that there are many MIA US air crews and aircraft wreckages in these mountains. And I'm looking north and uh, that snow mountain up there is the approximate area where I crossed in the Burma in 2003. On our way back out from this B-25 crash site, we decided to test this cane bridge that goes across the river. It consists of two lines of rattan or cane stretched between trees on either side of the river. 
You support your waist in the hoop and then you pull yourself across with your hands. And oops, he just dropped a pack. That's Tapir's pack. Tapir will be running in the river to grab that pack, hopefully. There he goes. <laughs> he wasn't real happy about that. This is me going across that same line. The line goes uphill on the far side, so it takes a little bit more effort to climb that uphill stretch. <laughs> 